What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the 365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and Microsoft Teams, and we're going to look at the action which is Create a Teams Meeting Preview. This is a new action that allows you to create a Teams meeting. So what does that mean? That means you create the meeting, create the appointment, but you also get app Teams links so that you can all join the same Teams meeting together in this day and age of using Teams for nearly everything this is a really important action. So let's take a look at it. I'm in Power Automate here. I have a manual trigger flow because I don't need any other information. And click on New Step. I can go to Microsoft Teams. And I can scroll down until I find this one here, Create a Teams Meeting Preview. Choose that one, and I'm asked for a bunch of things. So the first one is the calendar ID. So this is the calendar to create the, uh, the Teams Meeting appointment in. So I have three here, I have birthdays, calendar, United States holidays. Calendar is my default one because it's called calendar. If you have multiple calendars, they'll show up in here and you can choose the right one. I'm going to choose calendar for my instance. Then we need the subject. So this is the, the subject that will be sent out, the um, sort of appointment header of that appointment. So we're going to say um, new meeting to discuss project something like that, have something descriptive, you could have this pull information from a project, pull information from a record, set that in the subject. The message, so this is the message body that's going in. Uh, again, we can write stuff in here, said, hi, um, can we have a meeting to discuss the project? So that's a required field as well, so we need to put some information in there. Uh, and then we have time zone. So the time zone is going to be used to basically translate uh, and specify where this appointment is, is being held. So in this instance, I'm going to choose, I think it's, so we have all these like Pacific Standard Time, Central Standard Time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think it is Central European Time. Uh, Central European Standard Time is the one we want to use. Um, there's no British summertime in here. Um, they do have UTC. In the UK, we're currently in British summertime, although that will be coming to an end shortly. Um, and what this is going to do is this is just going to translate whatever time we put into here and specify, right, this time is Central European time, and therefore that's the, that's the time zone. And then it's going to translate that into other time zones if you're in a different time zone. So we do need to specify the time zone in here. Uh, start time, I will use uh, one of our favorite trans, UTC now, and uh, put that in there. Uh, and if you're wondering why, if I'm specifying UTC now, why I need to specify a time zone, the UTC now is just basically going to get whatever time in UTC, whatever time it is in UTC now, uh, and then put that in, and I'm just using that as an easy way to write the date and the time. The Central European time will then take that time and then say, right, we want it is like, you know, 2 p.m. that time or 4 a.m. that time. That's why we need the that's why we need the time zone. That's why we why we also need the actual time. Same thing with the end time. We're gonna use add uh, add hours uh, and we're just trying to put in UTC now and then just add one hour onto it. So it's just gonna do a one hour meeting. Again, you can bring this in from a dynamic content from another record or something like that. But this allows us to um, to specify those things. Next couple of fields we have required attendees and optional attendees, so we can send these out to people. Um, we can specify uh, who's required and who's optional on this. Unlike the Office three six five for Outlook appointment uh, creator, you don't actually have to specify a required attendee for this. You can actually have no required attendees. Uh, I think the one in the Office three six five connector does require attendees. If I show the advanced options, we have a few other things to go through. So we have location. So again, if um, we're, we're creating a Teams meeting here, but we still have that whole idea of you may want to create a Teams meeting and you may need to book out a room so that you can um, you know, all join in together in a conference call sort of thing. So there is the ability to specify a location here. We do have a port importance, just like with emails. Again, I never use importance because that's stupid. Uh, but it's good that you can have that there. Um, reoccurrence pattern. So this is cool. So you can schedule these things to reoccur. So you can reoccur daily, um, reoccur daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. This 
reoccurrence pattern is for the actual appointment. It's not going to be for the flow. So flow is not going to trigger multiple times. It's just going to set up an appointment with that reoccurrence pattern. Following on from that, we get number of reoccurrences. So we can specify a number. Uh, we can also specify a recurrence start and end date if we don't want to specify a recurrence number. So we could say start on this day, end on this day, or we could say, okay, just recur, reoccur three or four times, something like that. The next part here is actually the recurrence days of the week. So if it's going to recur on a day of the week, so we want this to reoccur every Tuesday, for instance, um, we can actually specify that in here by choosing, like putting like the day of the week in. If I switch this to an array, this allows me to do here. This allows me to do the same thing, but I can separate the days of the week by commas. So I can separate Monday, comma, Wednesday, comma, Friday. Uh, and that allows me to specify multiple days. Else I can kind of add these in one at a time by typing Monday, you know, add new item Tuesday, etc. And I can delete that there. So that's the recurrence pattern. Uh, we also get, is this an all day event? So we can set this to true to say, yes, this is happening all day or no. Um, if you don't set that to uh, to yes, then it's going to default to no. And no, it's not an all day event. Reminder, uh, time in, in minutes to uh, before to remind a person. So um, how many minutes do you want to be reminded before this meeting occurs? And is the reminder on? i.e. if you set this to true, it's going to um, specify yes, alert the user 15 minutes before that they have a meeting coming up, um, uh, or no, don't remind the user. If whichever one you choose, I think it still kind of um, looks at Outlook and looks at your settings in Outlook. Same thing for the number of minutes. It's going to look at your Outlook settings to actually determine that. I think this is a way to overwrite those default ones if you do need additional uh, reminders. Show as, so if someone accepts this invite, we can show their time as of being either free, tentative, busy, uh, oof, uh, working elsewhere, unknown. Uh, I think some of these may be custom ones that are in my system, uh, but yeah, just essentially we can specify the, the timings for this or like to show people as when they join it. Uh, usually in Outlook, the default is busy, um, so we just have that option here. Uh, and response, Response requested, set to true if the sender would like response to this uh, event is accepted. So this is basically just saying when someone gets that appointment in their Outlook calendar, they can click uh, yes. And if they click yes, it sends that back to uh, us here. Now, because we're doing this programmatically, as in we're creating this appointment through flow, um, we may not want to specify these things or we may want to specify these things. So it's all dependent on your use case and how you're going to be using this action. Um, anyway, let's take a look at it. So we're going to create an appointment right now. Let's click on test. I'll perform a trigger action. We'll save and test. Run the flow. Click done. But it in. That is my Outlook calendar uh, making noises to say it's just had an invite. Uh, and if I look in uh, in my Teams, uh, maybe I just need to refresh it. There we go. New meeting, discuss the project starting right now and we can click this we can edit it we can see the message that we had in there we can see the start time and the end time we can see there's not an all-day event we can you know do all these things inside here it's really cool if i go over to my outlook uh we can see my reminder here is that hey you've got an appointment starting right now and that was the that was the reminder that popped up because it's using my default settings for reminders of 15 minutes before the event we're starting right now so that's another thing um but yeah that's really cool so we can create those appointments and send them out even better than that because we may not want to be sending these things out in emails and stuff like that what or we may want to use another system to use the emails the the main reason you would use a um an action like this is maybe you need that team's link URL so that people can join the team, uh, join the team meeting. So I think it's called join URL, join URL. So we can actually get that bit out. I want to just run from the last, last test. We can actually get that bit out and we can expose this. Come on, there we go. So this, and then we've got a Teams link. 
So we could embed, embed this into another type of email. We could put this in a task. We could do something with it. Um, maybe write it back to a dynamic system or write it back to your SharePoint or something. But at least it gives us that link that we can do something with. Uh, and then we can come in here, put it into the web browser. It'll open, open Microsoft Teams um, and it'll open up the Teams meeting straight from there. So we can see um, I've got my, my Microsoft team. So there we go. So that is how you can use this action. So I think it has a lot of versatility. Great. Getting those Teams meeting links is something that's not really been achievable other than using the Microsoft Graph previously. So now that we have an action to at least get these, it creates the meeting, creates the links, you can invite people, you can do so much other stuff, set your reoccurrence patterns. There is so much to this action and that's why I think it's great. As always, I want to know what you guys use this for. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you use this action? Do you not? Like, what do you use it for? Let me know. If you found this video useful, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, click that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. I'll see you next time.